I met Diane, and of course I met Bonnie, but I didn't like her. <laughs> <laughs> but no, she. It was a different family that I came into, and so I started going with Diane, and, and uh, she started. Uh, she was going. She was a nominal Christian. She was going to Sister Kenny and Brother Kenny's church, yeah. and then we ended up going to a Methodist church. And uh, I had. Uh, let me step back a little bit before. Before I got saved, I used to, something was always there, even though in, in the worldly condition that I was in and the family I was raised in, there was something that I seen it, that I wanted to be a Christian and I didn't know what a Christian was about. And this sounds a little kiddish, but I remember laying on a hill outside of one of my, where I lived at and parents were gone already. And uh, I remember looking up the star and I was giving that little slogan, uh, uh, Star bright, star light, and make a wish tonight. And I always said, oh, I'd like to be a Christian like somebody, but I had no idea. But there was always something in there. And then later on, uh, I moved in with my grandma, and I went to Perry, and I met Diane. And, and uh, I had come home one time, and my grandma was the only Christian that I that I know at that time that uh, that I could say was a Christian that I, in the way I look looked at Christians, and. Uh, I remember uh, looking at a plaque on her wall one day, and I was probably 17 or 18 maybe at the time, just about the time I met her. And I have no idea why I said it till now, till later on in life. And I, and I had no idea what a prophet was. I didn't even know what it was. I'm, maybe it was just because of uh, Moses and the Ten Commandments I might have heard at one time. And I said, I said, well, if there was a prophet in our days, I'd probably follow that prophet. And then it was like a maybe... Six months later, I was going to church with her, and I went to the altar, and I gave my heart to the Lord, and uh, I started getting really involved in the church, and then her sister, which went, got started in the message through McKinney and the Dowells and the Browns and all that, started telling her that uh, there's a man down in Jeffersonville, Indiana, you need to hear. There's things going on down there, and, and uh, like miracles and things are going on, you know. And uh, of course, she said she want to go, and I'm thinking, well, what do you want to go for? I just got saved and get involved in this church. This is a new life for me, you know. And uh, so I decided to go. And this actually, it's about like us three and one more be Barbie Binkley, but she's not here. And there were the teenagers at the time going down. So we, I think, I went down with Bill. Bill. Bill, Bill, Bill Mary Graham. Yeah, we went down with Bill Mary Graham. And, uh, and I was kind of a little upset. We went to the wrench house. I believe it was the wrench house. And Brother Brennan was there at the wrench house. And uh, he walked out. And, of course, I guess I kind of had a little attitude anyway. <laughs> and I, they wanted, he was introduced. He, we got introduced to him and everything. And I walked up and kind of shook his hand and said, you know, whatever I say. <laughs> but anyway, I just turned and walked away. But he, he never he never gave me, gave me uh, any feeling that... That uh, I was disrespectful or anything, he just kept going. I turned around, went back in my car, and sit on the car until they got done talking. Which I feel really bad about it if you think about it nowadays. Put an attitude, but uh, just like they say, when it just seemed something started clicking, and when he went into the service, and as a, a boy growing up, not knowing what church is about, not knowing the different spirits that are there. When I walked in there, there was something that grabbed you, you know. I mean, I might have been a little disrespectful, but when I walked into the door, and there's just something that grabbed you. And like they say, when he walked out on the platform and introduced himself and got started the meeting and then said, he's here, and like they said, he stood up like a soldier. And to me, I always watched that closely. He got, it's just like he's taking everything under his control, like he says. His head, to me, would cock, and his eyes would just pierce out into the audience. And it just, it, it would just make you humble yourself no matter what. And he would go into the sermon. And I didn't understand Bible. I didn't understand anything. But something just started clicking on the inside of me. It just started moving, moving. And say I understood everything at the time? No, I didn't understand everything at the time. But I understand there was something in here that was clicking. Amen. 
you know, and it was I was being fed. I guess I didn't have anything to get out of me except for the world. I didn't have any denominational things to get out of me. I was just being fed like a baby and brought back up, you know. And uh, we had we were in rest and getting married and uh, and being from the world and she was a nominal Christian and I had to change my ways when I met her. And then there's things, questions we had about going together, dating, maybe even getting married. And uh, so she wrote him a letter and said, you know, we're both Christians. We want to be a Christian, uh, do as Christians do. And what should we do, you know? And uh, he wrote back on the back of a letter. I think she still has it. Gladys Dow give it to him yeah. at a lunch or something. She's uh, giving the letter. And he read it. And right then he just wrote on the back of it, give us an answer, you know, one answer. Yeah, you yeah, wrote on the scripture and said, if, I can't remember exactly how it was going. It's better to marry than yeah. burn. Yeah, it's better mm -hmm. to marry than burn. <laughs> so I, I didn't still quite understand I that. that. was just fine. <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay. So, I like that answer. <laughs> so anyway, we went on, and, and then I got baptized down in the church, and I didn't know anything of what baptism was. It was explained, you know, and how it was, and, and they, they called for baptism after service, and I thought, well, Lord, I, I, I don't know anything what, what, what to do here, you know. And I said, if I should be baptized, I mean, I, I want to be baptized if it's right, but I don't know if I should do it. And then all of a sudden, a presence just come over me, and I was bent over like this in the chair in the tabernacle. I got to sit down for a change. A lot of times you had to stand for three hours on the wall. <laughs> so I, I had got to sit down. And uh, the presence come over and it said, this was the right thing for me to do. To Praise be Lord. baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I, <clears throat> I got baptized. And then... Uh, we were, I can't remember what service we were down at, but Gladys come around and asked her, she said, did you still want to talk with Brother Branham? And she told him yes. He said, just a minute, I'll be right back. And she came back and said, he'll see you if you want to talk to him. So we went, we went around to the back of the building into the old office, and he was sitting on the other side of the desk in his little chair sitting back there. And uh, I come over and sit down. I mean, I, I'm nervous. I don't know what to say or what to do. And... Uh, Actually, but, by, but by this time, we were really believing it. Oh, yes. yeah, we yeah, were, yeah, yeah, definitely. By this time, we, we knew what he was, who he was, and we believed it. Yeah. I actually, I jumped back just a little bit because I went back to the Methodist preacher, and I had Malachi 4 and the spirit of Elijah coming back, and I, I said, is, what is this? Tell me what this is because I, I, need, I want to know. It's bothering me. And he said, Tom, he said, I'll tell you the truth. He said, I have no idea what this is. And then I went on into the message. God draw me on in that part. So, but he was honest. Yeah. He, <laughs> he, said, yeah. he didn't know. And I thought maybe it's a spirit, a ghostly spirit coming back. You know how teenagers think. I'm only, <laughs> I'm only 19 maybe at that time. So anyway, we go in the room. We sit down. I sit, she sits here and I sit right straight across from me. And uh, I didn't tell him anything. Except he asked me my name and ask her her name. He said, I told me, I thought, he said, what's your name? I said, uh, Thomas Frank. And uh, he looked at me a little bit and he said, what do they call you? I said, well, they call me Tom. And I still don't know what the day this meant, but he said, that helps. And then he talked to her. <laughs> and we were sitting there going back a little bit. And uh, all of a sudden the presence come in the room and it was just like, it was a tunnel between me and him. Everything was blocked out. Actually, he talked more to me than he did her. Oh, yeah. And he didn't say much much to her at all. Mm -hmm. Except he did ask her name, a few things, anything. And uh, our birthdays. Yeah. And uh, it just kind of locked in, and I didn't know where we were going because it was a different, all different feeling. It's just like I'm looking at you, and everything is gone, and it's just a tunnel between me and him. And he started telling me what I was there for and what I should do and how I should act. And this thing's here going on, you know. And I'm yeah, we never, we never even got to say one thing we was going for. No, he told we'll us all that. And, like, <laughs> and so, after he we went and through it, of course, you'll hear some of the things on the tape. He, he brings the third where if a, a man and a woman get together, or they, you know, they shouldn't. If you're not married, you shouldn't come together. You'll hear that on tape somewhere. 
He said, because a man's got a mold in his body and the only one will fit there is the wife that God gave him. And that's why you shouldn't go dance with another woman or show another woman in your arms or anything like that. And uh, and after, then after that, it left. He sat there and looked at him. He told, looked at her and he said, go ahead and marry him. And as soon as you can. <laughs> and uh, she said, well, my mom said I can't get married till I'm 18. He said, that's fine. He said, you do what your mom said. He said, and then you go ahead and get married. And he prayed with us and blessed yes. our marriage. And, Praise and the Lord. Went, and we left. Praise and, uh, the Lord. Yeah. And then we went on. And like they say, you had to stand. You had to stand outside the door two hours maybe to get in. Uh, we'd get dressed in a restroom sometimes, coming down early, uh, going in there. I I did sit by Brother Way after he was raised from the dead. I, I didn't know it till I got sitting down there beside him, and I looked over, and he was sitting there. And of course, what you think is this man was dead a week ago, and I'm sitting beside him today. <laughs> it's like, wow, you know. But but after all that, I mean, just just to be in the meeting and when when the angel of the Lord come down there was no you just know there was something different you know when his head set back and he had just a little cock in his head sometimes when he said he's here you just kind of want to make you slide down in your seat wow. and uh, we went to Dallas Texas once with both Tom Brown and I think nine of us went down there Eight of us. In oh, one, one car. In one car. <laughs> of course, Tom drove, so you know we got there for a year early. <laughs> but anyway, the, for one of the other experiences is I, I didn't know much about Pentecost. I didn't know much about demons except for I'd start getting into the tabernacle and hearing different things. And, and uh, we were at Grant's, I think it was a movie theater that they had to had to meeting at. Brother, Gant, I can't think of that guy's name. But, but, but anyway, we were down there in the meeting and... and uh, at the end of the service, and uh, he started to pray for a sick. And he stand, I can see him standing over the pulpit now, and it's outspread like this. And, and uh, he's calling out a, a, a demon of cancer, I think it was cancer. And he stopped, he head jerked sideways to the left. And he said, I see or I hear that spirit. You probably hear that on tape. The demon calling out for this demon here, they're calling for help for each other. And he took control. and. Next thing I knew, I was at the altar. Wow. I had no idea I got there, but I was at the altar. Amen. And it was just a just a power and a presence come down to Praise the, the Lord. That's in my experience. So it Praise the Lord. But doubting, I, I had no doubt that it was a messenger. I didn't understand much when I was 19, 20, 22 on up. But as God has revealed it to me in, in different ways. And there's no doubt in my mind. That God visit us through a prophet in our age. Amen. You know, I can't. Amen. I ain't going nowhere. Praise the Lord. <laughs>